What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? Welcome back to No Blood, No Fire. Man, we got a special guest in the building today, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to get into nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to introduce ourselves. As champion is no, the one. No, we got to introduce ourselves first. No, man, we got to introduce our guests, man. I want to just give a shout out. We got 2005 Mr. PSL, Mr. Basketball, U of M product, pro product, Deshaun. PD Sims, man. Clap that up, man, right quick, man. Sir, sir. Come on. God, man. Come hold on, on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. All right. We got we to gotta give this man some justice, man. Okay. What you got going with? You know what I'm saying? It's a legend right here, man. Okay. Hold on. I don't think y'all knew who. Detroit another, I don't think y'all knew who another legend was talking about when this shit dropped. Okay. You feel fine. me? Hold on. Hold on. I'm oh, seven mile like Petey. Seven mile what? Stay fair? Where we at? Where we at with it? Eastside? Seven mile to Quinder. Stay okay. fair. 75. I, hey, I ain't going to lie. When that song dropped, I was a little jealous. <laughs> that was the best shout out I ever heard, bro. On the mile cooking like Petey. Yeah, that's Ray. That's my man. Shout out to Ray. Shout out to Babyface. I ain't gonna lie, man. I was jealous up until the moment I got my shout out, man. I got I got a shout out that's coming out that's cold, baby. <laughs> it's cold. Hey, one of your partners too. Okay. GT. Oh, you got you one. You got you one. I got me one. You wait for it. You that's, taking yeah, every day. I guess, <laughs> can't wait for that bitch to drop. You know what I'm saying? Man, you gonna play that shit to death. Man, bro. for real, for real, bro. <laughs> Hey man, what's this? Shout out, man. Shout out to Petey, man. Up in the building with the indeed, gang, man. Indeed, bro, indeed, man, look, indeed. I'm Uncle Smooth. We here every week. Y'all know us. I got the gang as always. What's up, man? Say your name, gang. What up, Fago, man? We in here. What up, though? It's your boy J Blood. And man, it's no blood, no foul. We got the Detroit legend in here. Persian Doe Boy. You know what I'm saying? You of him Wolverine. He one of us, man. He like mm -hmm. a Detroit legend for real. Um, your name came up a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We was talking about who you think the best hooper. Michigan, like all time type shit. Niggas was like, niggas was name dropping. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, you know, I feel, I feel blessed to be amongst the presence of greatness. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, ain't, I ain't hear that the bar though. You know what I'm saying? Seven mile like Petey. I ain't catch it. You ain't catch that. I ain't that's, catch I, it. That's why I gotta be yeah, known, man. I ain't catch it. Faces shouting them out for a reason, man. Yeah. This is what the kids need to know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And one of the voices they need to listen to. Facts. You know so I want to get into it, like. Tell me about that. Tell me about the baby face upbringing on Seven Mile cooking up like pity. What we talking about, dog? So face, well, I met face through GT. GT is my little cousin. So GT always used to bring face around when we were younger, you know. Yeah. I'm coming up in my college days and, you know, even cooking, you know. I got stories with I used to bring Ray to my crib in Dearborn. You know, I cook a meal, something nice, and, yeah. um, you know. Okay. Can my, the boys ball? Can they hoop? <laughs> GT and Ray? They definitely they definitely been working on that game. Ray, <laughs> Ray definitely got a jump shot. Okay, sure. okay, sure. yeah. I seen some footage, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to get your stamp on it. Oh, yeah, Ray. Uh, I approve. I approve for sure. For sure. I first, I first heard about your cooking. I ain't even know from my brother, man, when y'all was with the uh, Boston Celtics. Oh, man, that's, he, that's one of the best stories ever, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I got an opportunity to go to training camp with the Celtics, and, of course, Jordan was on the team, yeah. man. You know, one day me, Jordan, and Marshawn at his house, I think we, we all went to the grocery store. I put it down one time. Jordan was like, shit, you ain't even got to live at the apartment no more. Shit, come in, move in with me. <laughs> and, you know, that's my baby sizzle, man. Mm -hmm. Jordan, um, that time I had in Boston, Jordan was real close, getting me through the ropes. He was a pro already. So, you know, Detroit, he already know what, what I was up against. So he, he just was there helping me during that whole time. So that's what's right, up. That's what, dog, you be cooking it up, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, that's like my my second life, man. Okay, that's yeah. what's up. We gonna do a little spinoff, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm chefing yeah, it up for sure, man. Cause I'm cold with it too, man. My mama got them big elbows. You feel me? <laughs> Get that mac and cheese right, my boy. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta put it to the test one day. Yeah, straight up, <laughs> man. So. I kind of want to, before we get into anything that happened, you know what I'm saying, this past weekend, mm -hmm. I kind of want to get, you know what I'm saying, to your interview. Um, I know about you from Persian, Mr. Basketball, Michigan, and all that, but I know it started before that. You had put in probably about 10,000 hours prior to that. So tell me about, like, you know, the hoop, you know what I'm saying, that you was into early on, 
You know what I'm saying? Up until getting to Persian. So getting to Persian, I think I started playing in seventh grade. Damn, um, okay. My first encounter with basketball, I was in seventh grade. I, I didn't even have no basketball shoes or or actual basketball shorts. So gotcha. Was you tall already type type shit or no? I had the height, so okay. people were, you know, when you got the height, people were already looking in the neighborhood. Yeah. People mm-hmm. ran by blowing blowing the horn. Hey, get in the gym. Hey, so, big fella. Yeah, big fella. Big <laughs> right. fella. Stop at the gas station. So, yeah. you know, it, it was one day. Um, it's got Coach Cooper. Shout out to Coach Cooper. Um, Coop, legend. Coach Cooper, legend. Um, he invited me to – Seventh grade um, basketball practice at Farwell. Okay, I didn't make the team only because uh-huh. I had on jean shorts <laughs> and all white low Air Force Ones. You know what I, mean? oh. I ain't know nothing about a practice or nothing. I thought right. you wore your best gear when you come shit. Kind of crispy. Wore the best shit you got. You just want to laced up, dog. The box was unlaced. Like tie your shoes up, gang. <laughs> I was introduced to a jab step. I think. Uh, Rolling the ball out, playing king of the court at the end of the practice. Dude gave me a jab. I think I failed, failed to the baseline from the free throw line. Mm. <laughs> and I didn't come back. I didn't make the team, man. I had a growth spurt eighth grade. Um, I started develop a little touch. Um, guys started working with me. Shout out to A-Dub Canada. He started working with me. A-Dub was that. working with you way back then, before? So I was going to a place called Reach. Shout out to mm-hmm. Reach again, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. During this basketball age. journey, it was a lot of um, guys that were pivotal in my growth. Um, Marcus Webster, Virgil Phillips, mm-hmm. Shai Phillips. Um, yeah. A lot of guys Shai. that Our just – Our coach, Mark. Oh, yeah, it's hilarious, bro. Yeah, just bred <laughs> basketball, yeah. and they knew my family um, from growing up. So mm-hmm. they had like a key to pressure me, and Coach Cooper gave me that shot, eighth grade. Played with Tawan Porter. Shout out to Tawan Porter. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. He was real tough on me when I started playing the eighth grade. <laughs> so throw me all kind of crazy passes. Expect for me to catch him. Call me Butterfingers. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, after eighth grade, shit, it was all you wrote, you know. Played for the family. Um, A-Dub kind of helped push my growth and discipline, you know, with just that hard, tough love, mm-hmm. that um, empathy, you know. Yeah. Things I think we lacking in today's sports, just mm-hmm. that we understand, but sh- we don't care. You know what I'm saying? Right. Basketball don't care about nobody yeah. for mm-hmm. real. So those type of things being embedded in me, being young, you know, mm-hmm. propelled me to shit. Get a scholarship to Michigan. Right. Do those things at Persia. I think it just so it's took a village, though, for real. He just said some real shit. Basketball don't care about nobody. It don't care. Right. Yeah. Kids say, oh, my mom's sick, Um, you know. Oh, I had to go here. I had to babysit the kids. You know, at the end of the day, that ball don't stop. So mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. practice somebody gonna, else right there to take your spot. Else right there, man. Mm-hmm. So it's bittersweet, but empathy. Yeah. Understand, but still don't that ball still don't care. Yeah. Right. Man, talk about the uh process like of like you say you you know, you had got cut, and then you had to hit the growth spurt. So like going into Persian, going into your ninth grade year, like what was your expectations for yourself? Did you know like that? The opportunity of varsity was gonna be there or automatically, or you you seen that it was like some competition that you had to face. Like, what was that like? Uh, thing about basketball when you start so late is it, different from guys putting in that work fifth grade, sixth grade. Right, mm-hmm. you don't got no hope. You just going in it. You know what I mean carefree. So ninth yeah. grade, I had no expectations. Gotcha. You know, mm-hmm. I remember the big guy got kicked off the team that was actually playing center for Persian, mm-hmm. and the coach looked down the bench, called my name, Petey. I'm like. Shit. <laughs> it was Walt Walters who was playing Southeastern. Mm. I don't know if y'all remember Walt Walters. Walt Walters. Yeah. He was about 6'11". Yeah. Yeah. 6'11", eleven. Yeah. Yeah. eleven, dog. What monster? You know, <laughs> I told the coach, I'm not going in there with him. You know, like, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> he a freshman though. Freshman. He a freshman, like, hey, freshman. Hey, I'm not going in there with. I don't dog. remember cross country up until this point. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember practicing up until this point. I just remember that first game they tried to put me in, and I remember he put me in, and they called a play. I didn't run the play or nothing. I just ran to the baseline. They threw me the ball, and the shot went in. That's really started my career. Once I know that I had the ability for the ball to go in, mm-hmm. and not really. I don't remember putting in so much work gotcha. up until then. You know, yeah. I knew I had God with me, so mm-hmm. I rolled it on out from there. 
So it's kind of like a blur until you hit that shot type until shit. Until I hit you, that shot. And that's, and you and got that's rolling. a true story. You know what I mean? Because I don't remember nothing up until I hit that first shot. That's crazy because I remember uh, coming to uh, your middle school games at Farwell with you and Tawan, and you were supposed to come to Renaissance at one point. Ooh, that's a terrible story. Dude. You might tell the story. <laughs> yeah, what happened, dog? <laughs> Shout out to TP. Oh, well, it, we it, we edited it if it's too terrible, but go ahead. <laughs> Shout out to Tawan, but, you know, you played with Tawan, so Tawan just wasn't having it. He just, he dealt with me at Farwell. You know, high school was a different month, so he like, I don't want nobody over here with me. I need this ball by myself. <laughs> Renaissance had this crazy summer program, you know. It was real mm. hard to get into, you know. Yeah. You know, Joe. Yeah. You had to do real work, you know. That and Tawan, like, I walked in the program first day. He like, why you following me, man? Why you ain't going to Persia, man? That's by your house. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you like, yeah, that. we go. We, we go. <laughs> no, leave that. That's real <laughs> shit, though. That's, That's what happened. happened. Right. I mean, you know, it's like, yeah. shit. You know. Hey, Force your hand to be a dope boy. Like, fuck it. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am going to go by the crib, nigga. My, my baby forced my hand to be a dope yeah. boy. I was. <laughs> forced my hand. He was on your way. Yeah. It was right in the neighborhood. TP ain't want me there. And, and at that time, TP was God for basketball. Oh, man. In, in Detroit. Man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. TP, he was putting mm. in the most work. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I mean, he was the most dedicated at that time. So, Got you. you know, it was TP World. So, yeah, I thought what he said went. At right. That time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and still, you don't necessarily want to, you know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. At I mean, that point. So, mm. all right. So, getting into Persian, at what point did you kind of get your groove? Was it sophomore year, junior year? Like, when sophomore did you find year, your rhythm? Sophomore year. I got an opportunity, ninth going to 10th grade. I came out there with the family. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now I got to see. I turned you up. Me, yep. Different yeah, kids yeah. And with same talent level and me seeing still being almost at the top of that talent level, you know what I mean, at the top of that class. So, you know, those were the things that fueled me to keep getting better. So I'm like, okay, I see that I'm getting better. Keep doing, you know what I mean, different things. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it wasn't nothing that I asked for. Basketball wasn't nothing I asked for. So everything that I got from it during this process I was just grateful. All mm-hmm. pros type shit. Yeah, all pros. Yeah, like, all like, pros. Like, like, hey, it was hey. all pros. Cause one your dream for real. Like it wasn't my dream. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, but God tend to take the wheel with people. You know, mm-hmm. and whatever situation you in in your life, He just used basketball to steer me in. He took the wheel and. It was like the six man shit. I was first. You mean you know, you're just shit, throwing shit in? Shit huh? Going in. Shit in. <laughs> <laughs> like I need practice that one. That yeah, just went in. You feel me? <laughs> it's just it's up. Okay. So um, along that time frame, who was some of your toughest competition you was going up against? Did you ever go up against TP, PSL, yeah. anything or, or no? Yeah, the PSL. I ain't really. Um, my toughest guy in the PSL, I ain't really seen nobody in PSL once I got yeah. to that level. You know, once I was, you know, in the ninth and tenth, I saw – I was Joe. Guys like you and Joe were, you know what yeah. mean, playing in the state. So, right. I so your upperclassmen was more I your competition. I compare myself to them. But once I got of age and was the man, I ain't really see nobody but Manny Harris. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Manny was just a whole – Different type of dude. Different beast yeah. in high school. Yeah. 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 But okay, so that's time taking us up into that Mr. PSL, Mr. Basketball senior year. What I mean, I know you was at this point you had that confidence, but you know what I mean, were you expecting Michigan? What were the offers like rolling in, like junior year? Senior? I could have went to any school. Um, by the time that family circuit and just what I was able to do, I could have went to any school. Gotcha. I could just get. I really gave myself to Michigan. I'm okay. like, I'm a local kid. Mm-hmm. Program is doing whatever. Y'all just got to take me, you know. Right. Michigan State was a little too far. And Tom Izzo was a little bit too tough at that time. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So, talk, can, you, can you talk about that circuit? But That's this, uh, the summer before your senior year? Like, what was it like? Yeah, like, yeah. what was that? Ooh, summer? Who was on the team, too? Oh, the summer before my senior year, it was Ramar Smith. I had Tawan Porter, Manny Harris. I had Jordan Crawford. He's somewhere around here. I had... We just oh, had crazy. the, the we, yeah, we just had the <laughs> best of Detroit. I even That's got going a, crazy, bro. Yeah, I mm-hmm. got a taste to play with Joe and Malik Harrison at, at a point in my young career 
on that circuit with Speedy. Speedy believed in me that much. He gave mm. me a taste of that 17 being in the 10th grade. So, mm. you know, and I was just telling Joe earlier, Speedy only named a couple guys a stud. You know, shout out to Coach Speedy, the family, mm. that program. You know, yeah. we know what that program do. But he was only naming a couple guys studs. And mm-hmm. I got that stud title in, you know. It carried weight with him. It meant something. It yeah. meant something, and, and around the country. So, you know, well, Joe, Joe, what, <clears throat> what was that vibe like? You know, what I'm saying, you know, y'all nationally ranked, mm-hmm. you know, top ten, and now y'all got a young sophomore on y'all team. What was that like? Having, I mean, up? around that time, bro, it was so much talent. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like. At that time, it was like me and Malik were the the older guys, and we were ranked like top ten in America. Then under right under the us was CDR, mm-hmm. so he was coming up like he was playing with us. But the next year, he would go into his own. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then right under there, it was you know Deshaun, TP, Ramar, Tracy, Jordan, and that's when you know that's when they really like that year. It was like. It was so many of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, young dogs. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. Because it was like, at that time, it was like, we were starting to build that uh, that pipeline okay. to where it was like, okay, it's our year this year, yep. and next year it's going to be their year. Strike you know what I'm saying? Field. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, I, I look, when I, after I left and I went to college, I looked back and it was like, you know, Deshaun, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. It, you know, uh, you know. Of course, you had Wes around at that time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Describe <laughs> that. Describe that. Yeah, I, for know. sure. Yeah. So <coughs> we end up um, fortunate for the family. We end up meeting a guy like Uncle Wes, like one of the best people to basketball. Then he did a lot for Detroit, not even being from Detroit. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was from Detroit. How about yeah, that? You know what I'm saying? That says a lot to how right. much yeah. love he gave to, to the yeah. city, you know. And I was one of his main guys. Mm. Just We 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 just going to say through them basketball guys, that was just mm. another part of my yeah. journey where God just like, That's okay, your life. we going to put you in the right position. We, right. we putting you right in West hands. And, yeah. I mean, through those things, you know, it could have been a little distracting for me and could have been reason why I ain't make it because I saw so much so early, you know. Mm-hmm. And, Joe, you know, that exposure and be, having your eyes open is like, what am I reaching for? And I ain't going to lie. Like, I was, like, the uh, first to go through that. So it didn't really, like, I didn't really experience it how the next experienced it. Because y'all got to see us, and then that's when the the motor really came to Detroit and was really behind Ooh, all the you know Detroit players. So like describe that from that senior year to Michigan, and it just being because I was looking back at it like, damn, these niggas got on LV. These <laughs> niggas got on, you know what I'm saying? They put y'all, shit on. y'all was going, to, y'all was going to the runs in Gucci and wearing it once and letting it go. You feel me? Man, you had to be there. Then, yeah, okay. for real. And you was wearing Nike to the run. I was wearing said. Nike, okay. man. I was, right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Man, that was just one of those times where we had it, man. <laughs> 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 we don't know where it was coming from. Yeah. But it was there. <laughs> and it was there. And it was <laughs> unlimited. And it was. It was unlimited. Unlimited. Yeah. unlimited. For young kids coming from nothing, man, and, and using yeah. basketball as a tool, just to even get in the room with some of these people. Yeah. And then y'all That's turn right. around and doing NILs. Come on now, man. Y'all was NIL before NIL. Yeah, we was NILs. <laughs> we, we we got we were NILs, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, we deserved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine yeah. now these mm-hmm. kids ain't gotta go through spending mm-hmm. even fifteen hundred dollars scholarship check, mm-hmm. rent thirteen fifty. Right. Exactly. You got one fifty to Come eat on, for the rest Come of the on. month. Mm-hmm. And it's do the right thing. Yeah. Just go to class. <laughs> It's uphold the standard of the university. At the end of the day, it's like, are you hungry? I'm starving. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I'm starving, you know. And God was with us, man. We didn't have to go through none of that. Like, and it was, it was so crazy. Every people around us started to notice it. We were able to change the lives of people around us. So 
we went mm-hmm. to the league. You know, mm-hmm. we we experienced that. Right after y'all left, it, we turned to the rock stars, and it was just a couple mm-hmm. of us. Some of some of the guys stayed, of course, you know, mm-hmm. but a few of us turned to rock stars. No, it was it. That's what it was looking like for sure. <laughs> rock star status. Yeah, it Straight was crazy, up. man. <laughs> okay, so entering into Michigan, it was it was really your choice. You had options. Yep, I had options. You really went there because it was like hometown squad. I want to rock out here. Thirty minutes from the crib. Straight up. Yeah, my daughter go there now, nah, man. So I feel it, but. What was the culture like? Was it culture shock getting up in Ann Arbor, or was it like all hoops? So you ain't really get to see that culture shock change. I ain't really get to see it because Detroit was thirty minutes. I think I had a brand new car when I got there. I was mm. just back and forth with it. Go, I was, um, you know, class nine to ten, um, practice at twelve. Enough time to go to Detroit. Mm. <laughs> he was back, he was back and forth, ago, straight up, <laughs> straight up, bro. I put like sixty bands on the car in six months. Wow, you said what? I put what? like sixty thousand miles on the car bro. in six months. In I was going to Detroit months? three times a day my freshman year. I what? Couldn't, I couldn't let it go. <laughs> I couldn't let it go. I was still living those high school. You know, mm. I ain't get to feel high school yet because I was practicing every day, getting out at nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't get to feel yeah, who I was. Free time up school. there and shit. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, I committed to Michigan at first. I remember that. Yeah, I had committed, and that's one of the reasons I decommitted is because at the time when uh, I committed to Michigan, my status was still going up. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, I don't think it's too many cities like Detroit where you get that, like, that fame in the city where it's just so much. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it was like. It's enough. Man. It's enough. It's enough. You don't just, even need for no you to more. be happy, bro. For you to be happy. Yes, bro. You enough. feel me? So <laughs> that's why I had, de- that's one of the reasons I decommitted <laughs> from Michigan because it got, people was putting my name on flyers. I'm 17 years old. Niggas were saying I'm going to be at a, a club. I'm, I'm not going to be there. You feel me? People saying I'm other places, all type of yeah. shit. Niggas saying I got jumped. I ain't get, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you I'm trying like, to get away type yeah, shit. Yeah, I'm dude. like, bro, this shit too much. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was mm. still going up. So I'm like, if I go to Michigan, I'm going to be back in the city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, and I and I, and I I seen it on y'all. I'm like, mm-hmm. dog, they got like 30 niggas with them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. damn you know God, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, that shit was crazy. All right. So, like, developmental-wise on the court, did it hurt, help? How was it, you know what I'm saying, for it, you in your situation? It hurt it because yeah. I only had enough time for practice. I, I, my life was mm-hmm. outside of basketball. I only had enough time. We, is we getting too deep? No. <laughs> no, no, man. No, these youngest need to hear nah, this Nah, that's shit, why I'm asking man. for the youngest that's on the same yeah. shit. Yeah. So a lot of them on that same tip right now, but they, they might want to – Focus up, you know what I'm saying? I told you that's the reason why, you know, I'm into coaching now. I'm into development. Mm -hmm. The things that I miss and know that I supposed to do, it's a blueprint. Just do those things, man. And try your best to get them to do it. Now, the generation is different now. It's harder to get these kids to do those things. But I feel like it was hard. I just wasn't, that just wasn't in my schedule, man. (laughs) Gotcha. Getting better just wasn't in my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just wasn't. Get back no. one. <laughs> I already had it. I was you already better than y'all. Exactly. Yeah. I was already better than y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, you say it's the blueprint. It's a blueprint. And that's it's, the hard work shit. It's a and that's the only fucking way to make it to where niggas want to go. You want to be Hall of Fame every day with this shit, bro. Dog. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that, that's <laughs> cool. hey, dog, that's that shit was too real. That's class. What about schedule, bro? Like, getting like, better than my schedule. Dude. Practice was over at nine. Nigga. Yeah. Like, I only practice with the team, brother. Yeah. Like man. it was just the team practice. All that other shoot. Oh man, I'm getting dressed. I'm Got already you. wet. So hat still wet. Putting on my clothes. Yeah, you ain't sweating after that. <laughs> shit, huh? That's oh, you wanna get, You I taking showers? Throw that cologne on, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Over, nigga. <laughs> Tell me get some shots up. Nigga, they go 14, <laughs> 23, 96, nigga. I'm oh, 94. Uh, uh, listen, <laughs> I could have drove. Listen, it's been nice. I could have drove that route you just said with my eyes, eyes closed. closed bro. Boom, boom, boom. 
Yeah, I'm right to the city. Once I yeah. get on 96, yeah. man. It's over. Mm -hmm. It's over, man. It's 80, 90 to the crib. I, 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 I drive it once a week, bro. I know. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, okay, so. But talk more about the, because uh, you, 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 you mentioned about, like, it's the blueprint and what, you know, what to do. That's why you got into coaching. But before we uh, started the podcast, you was talking about the system you implement into uh, Persian. Yep, yep. So. Basically, I, I think everything now for kids is incentive. You know what I mean? Even with our own kids, you mm -hmm. know, is what we can give them to, you know, get them to act like we need to, you know. Mm -hmm. So don't be a fool and don't think that's the same, not the same thing that's going on with these high school kids or in these high schools, these mm -hmm. high school programs, you know. Everything is incentivized. You I mean, you got to give something to get something. Yeah. So we started programs in Persian where we taking tons of donations of things that kids want. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, we using our influence, my influence, people around me influence to get things in great condition that kids want. And right. man, it's doing, it's doing, it's going so great for the behavior changes in the school. You mm -hmm. know. And another thing with basketball, same way, you know, you show a kid you you got genuine love for them. You know, you ain't going to reach every kid, but I'm coming from the aspect of genuine love, you know, because mm -hmm. I was that kid who just needed to turn the corner. Once the guys that, my Persian guys who started putting that love in me, it was enough for me to grow, mm -hmm. get a scholarship, yeah, be a man now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And those things just need to be back implemented, I think. You know, we just went away from that, man. Yeah, and 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 I think that's what's most important and today, because that's what we had when we were coming up in high school. We had people that genuinely cared, mm -hmm. that were coaches that was with us all day. I don't know how they used to do that for free. Yeah. You know, for like free. old hands, though, right? Yeah, yeah and right. it's like you know to see blood back in here doing this thing, and you, you know, ultimately being that Persian and and mm -hmm. doing that, somebody that's. From there, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That really know how these kids think. Because I think that's one reason why public schools is down is because enough of us are not there. You know what I'm saying? To really mm -hmm. motivate them and things. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think the program that you talked about before we got on camera is genius. You know what I'm saying? Right. He's talking about having like, you call it dough bucks. Yeah, so so yeah. we, we all got right. all these dough dishes. We, 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 we get pizza. Right now, the kids are into drip. And, right. and, and at the end of the day, they want to eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we won't won't say control, but you can kind of control the kids with what they want to wear, right? What mm -hmm. they want to be in, and you know, food. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So we got these this um, uh, monetary system where we got authentic money, which we call dough bucks for Persian dough boys, and you know. You by doing great things with your behavior, being in class on time, doing all your assignments that week, you know, not having, you know, what I mean, no disruptions, no insubordinations. Mm -hmm. We reward you with money, and the money part of the school has gotten so real. You almost can get these kids. Oh yeah, you in the hallway? Oh yeah, you not getting no dope books. Okay, I, mean, I, I went to all my classes all day. They trying to get that money. Can I get this money? Because once the store open, we open it once every two weeks. They mm. anticipate it. You know what I mean? It's things yeah. in there they want. Mm. They stomachs mm. is full. You know, so what it'd mean? be some. It'd be clothes and shit. Some it'd real be clothes, it'd be, food, it'd be clothes, clothes getting dripped food, out, drip, mm. toiletries, um, okay. electronics. Yeah. So you what? spend it how you want it type yeah. shit. You, you like, spend it how you want it, mm. and we set it at a high monetary value because you know, and we give the teacher the highest denomination of the money just based yeah. on, you know, we want the performance to be in the grades, you know. Yeah. I think we need to implement this in all Public DPS school. schools. Yeah, straight up. Yeah, and no. Petey needs to be the leader of that. Yeah. Don't run and take the sauce, man, without taking this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right but you know they try to do real, that, bro. man. Go get the dude who yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I just say I idea. just say this, Joe. What up? At the end of the day, you know, do something that's going to benefit the kids. Everybody mm -hmm. got these ideas and, mm -hmm. you know, these old school right. mentalities. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you got to, you know, gotta, yeah. mess with it a little, little bit. Nah, that's what it results. is, bro. Yeah. I mean, that's going to motivate them the right way. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. get that dough bucks, get the money up. For sure. So, 
that's like the that's not that like that's currently where you are on your journey right now. But we left off a lot. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, go back into so it. Like, go back. All day. So from Michigan, you know, you was playing there, of course, but that led to NBA for a second. I know you went overseas, got your money and everything, but that Michigan time, I want to hear about that. Like other than like, did you ever kind of get on track the right way? Did you ever mature up a little bit? You feel like? Oh, no, or? I still was a fifteen hundred point scorer. Yeah, you did. Rebounds. You know, I would. I didn't know you was on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It, 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 it still was. You know, it still was a balance because shout out yeah. to Coach Beeline. He mm-hmm. had a way of. You know, I had to finish my breakfast before yeah. I did anything. You know, mm-hmm. so I made sure, and I finessed it. You know, yeah. I made sure that he saw that I was doing everything that I needed to do, you know what I'm saying, where he ain't going to worry about PD missing because yeah. I'm going to be on time. I was never late. I never been late. Yeah. I never missed a practice. Yeah. I never missed a game my whole time in Michigan. So, you know. I see what you're saying. So you feel like you just could have probably got more out of yourself. Oh, yeah, I know that. I you know, know what I'm saying? But in my mind, it was like I didn't ask for this, and I'm not going to hell to see if I'm going to burn, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to stay on the surface. I ain't going to know anyway. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to know. I ain't going to go all the way through this, do everything I need to do not to make it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sensitive, Aquarius. You know what I mean? That would have <laughs> killed me if I, you know, went as hard as, went the hardest and didn't yeah. make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the one thing that prevented me from, from going or making it, you know what I'm saying? That's interesting because when I look at like your professional career, and do we want to go there yet? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. But you had a long professional career, and I seen the hard work and dedication you put into that to play ten plus years overseas, and that's not easy. So what clicked? It was always there. I always still grow. Like it mm-hmm. was still that 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 God given path you know what I mean yeah. like I was still growing I got better overseas I was even getting better in my ninth and tenth year yeah, I just right, stopped yeah. on my own wheel yeah, I was playing my best basketball with the IQ and mm-hmm. me seeing the game everything slowing down I mm-hmm. was right. I could have did what I well, wanted crazy. to do out there mm-hmm. still right. can mm-hmm. you know so it was it was just always I had I always had self-confidence knowing that you know I was just better than a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I would, you know, tell myself that a lot. And I tell myself that a whole season. And and, the, and my thing was always have them calling you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Always do something. I never had to look for a job. Like, mm-hmm. I never was like, looked in March or, I mean, right. August was the time they start Looking calling around, you back on the season. agent like, what's up, what we got? Like, it was soon just always se- coming. As soon as the season over, I always had a job. So that means you were starting strong and finishing strong. Yep. And that took me to my, like, mm. probably my third or fourth year as a pro that it clicked to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I was in a position where I wasn't where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So I kind of took it for granted sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So around my third or fourth year, I was like, even though I'm not in the NBA like I want to be in the NBA, I still should leave this – ball club in good standards mm-hmm. and that and that and that was a challenge like okay you know because you living over there now so you getting up in the morning they seeing you every day and for six well, for 10 months you're gonna see some bullshit mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but i had to learn how to start strong and finish strong and mm-hmm. leave in yeah. good standards because that'll make them want to call you back and other teams call you back sure. right. that's mm-hmm. the main thing overseas yeah. Let you gotta do something to have them calling you back, Jay. You know you yeah. gotta want them calling you back. Whatever you doing through that season, it goes through our head the last couple months of the season. Like, damn, did I do enough? You know what yeah. I mean, I ain't never really had that feeling because I knew how to milk the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Start strong, finish strong, and they do some shit to make you want to go off on their ass to do some bullshit. Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. Uh, some overseas. Playing overseas, you mentally just have to be like, and you know, it gives you social issues coming, being ten months there, right. and mm-hmm. coming Away over from here. Everything, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you got to be 
I call it Denzel Watch. You got to be an actor over there. <laughs> okay. Like Joe just yes. said, it's things that's going to piss you off. You're not going to get paid. You got to act like that you mm. you are okay with doing hard work and not getting your money when it's time to get your Getting paid a couple weeks late type <laughs> shit and You got to be okay. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it's coming, but it just... And ain't, ain't when they say it. It might come. It and might you, not. You might oh, have to fight with your lawyer. You know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah. Got Bill, you. Everything. So they will play that game with you. And it's your word versus theirs. When you in Rome, do as the Romans do. So yeah. <laughs> if you over there talking about money, 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 they talking about tomorrow, 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 mm -hmm. you tell somebody else, man, they ain't paid me. That's going in one ear and out the other over there. Listen, yeah. to, listen to that East Side nigga talking international. Right. You hear him? <laughs> do your no fucking Rome, job. Do what yeah. Romans do. Right up, literally. Yeah. <laughs> just, just do your, do your fucking job. Indeed, mm. indeed. Don't worry about the money. Since we on the topic of overseas, like, uh, man, I had the uh, pleasure of playing against PD in Lebanon. Oh, y'all did? Y'all played yeah. against each other? Okay. So, uh... PD at Canada, Lebanon, I think this was 2013. He ended up uh, his first year over in Lebanon. I played with a team called Suggest. And uh, PD can attest to this. Like, Suggest got some of the best fans in the world, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they kind of – they die hard fans over there. And uh, your first year, man, playing for a team like that in Lebanon, I wanted you to kind of, you know, talk about that experience. What was it like? Man, I was the man in Lebanon. That's <laughs> it. Then they was paying you so much money, and then they were giving it to you in cash. And then Man. just how passionate, then you learn about, you know, that religion beef over there, you know, the Christians and the, you know, Muslims. the Christians and the yeah. Muslims. Mm -hmm. You really get to see, like, that beef. So I was on the Christian team, suggest, <laughs> and, like, they were so passionate. They would die for. They would die for us. You know what Straight I mean. Up. So just right. having that type yeah, of story, bro, that serious. <laughs> having that type of charisma, that just made you play better. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I'm talking about. I'm doing regular dunks, and it's like they, they all world. So, and mm -hmm. I tell people today, Lebanon is the best country I ever played in, just because of the kind of like that carefree attitude the people got over there. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And the people, they they they're real good people. You know, I remember googling like you, you was in you know Middle East, like like in my mind. Yeah. So I'm googling where my dog at, thinking it's gonna be just terrible. That shit was beautiful, my boy. Man, oh, that beautiful. Was, it was beautiful. I, I never knew. Living in Lebanon, oh, I was like, this is this is amazing. Like it looked like yeah. some like Greece or something over there. Like oh, man. water, man. Man. cliffs, the Medi and all Mediterranean that. Sea, bro. It was. Then I played for them Sarkeesis. Oh yeah. Shout out to Coach Sarkees. Shout out to Coach first, Sarkees. See, that was the first first coach I played for. Word. Yeah. Word. I'm at the house, big house. <laughs> is they like a family or something? You said like Sarkees. Is that like yep, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he, uh, they still got his denture servings over there. over there, man. Got you. I understand. That's a culture shock, too. You like, I know what a denture servant is. A slave. A slave like, a slave, basically, man. you know what I'm saying? They still had them over there, yeah, man. No, facts. Like, that man, was weird. That was crazy. weird seeing that, bro. Like, it was weird, man, because, like, he said, ain't nothing been out of my house. Nothing in my house has been out of place for the last 10 years. Like, how, their house was perfect. perfect. They had Got two you. indigenous servants staying in their house. That's wild. So yeah. like, where, where we going with this combo, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put a gun with this. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, cut this one up. No, 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 we can't. Yeah, hey, we can't. No, so, you know, that's hard, that just puts you in a, in a different mind yeah, frame. Yeah. Like, you, you, you say you home. You home yeah, you now, home. baby. You ain't got to go back. You that's ain't got to go <laughs> Shit. I know you had that, you know, good, good career overseas. I want to talk about, like, as far as the NBA portion of it, because I know that's some cat's only objective, only goal, mm -hmm. when that might not be what God got for you. Mm -hmm. So tell me how that was like. Because I know you said it kind of wasn't your dream all the, all the time, but I know at a certain point when you're going crazy at Michigan, it's like, oh, yeah, this shit mine. You know what I'm saying? So talk to me about your mental and how that affected you and, you know what I'm saying? So my analogy always been, you know, like a girl, you, the basketball was like a girl that had to grow on you. Mm -hmm. To say, no disrespect, you know, girl you don't really like that much, a bigger girl or a girl who mm -hmm. don't look that good. You right. know, y'all yeah. kicking and y'all eventually – Gonna fall in love, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You seeing, you know how good she is to you, you know what I mean? 
the benefits of having her around, mm-hmm. you going to fall in love. And yep. so I did, you know what I mean, end up falling in love. Found that love. That and I found that right. love, you know what I'm saying? And when I found it, I could say it was too late as far as the youth development. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I mean, I found it at a good time. So, yeah, the NBA part was, you know, I had already made money overseas. So, yeah. Trying out, and so it's like a trial, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, you know, it's egos, and this guy's making quadruple amount of money. Mm-hmm. And one thing I learned about the NBA is, even though they make that money, they still love to hoop. Mm-hmm. A lot of the guys love to hoop. So my opportunities, I was the 16th guy, you know what I mean, trying to make it on a team with guys who just like to hoop, you know what I mean? Right. And... You know, after a while, it was like, you know what I mean? Shit, I, I ain't never had the type of game that can make it off no hustle, mm-hmm. off no scrappy plays. Mm-hmm. I'm a hooper. Yeah. So, Need to rock. Tr- yeah, if you ain't trying to see me hoop, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I played four preseason games. I ain't mm-hmm. miss a shot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so I know I can play in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. I played with Jordan. It was some times where... You know, I had – I showed that I could play in the league. Mm-hmm. All I wanted to do was do that. And mm-hmm. I took my ass back overseas, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, I could have stuck, stuck it out and played in the mm-hmm. D-League and just did took that Took that last play type of shit and, like, went, went through the journey. I was already a man. I was already, like, then all my peers, you know what I mean? I, I was at the top. Got you. At one point with my peers. So, mm-hmm. it was really, like, nothing to me. And I was, I, I was content. Got you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's kind of hard to judge it now because around it's, it's different opportunities now where these G League players are getting paid more money now. Yeah, because I Shit. killed the yeah. G League. I got a, you said a, what? a crazy story. You said what? I said I got a crazy story. My first year, I, I signed in the Euro League uh-huh. coming yeah. out of Michigan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Man, tell me about that, though, like as far as like – how that happened, you know what I'm saying? As far as you signed immediately and then went G League or no, was no, it D no, League no, back no, then? No, no, no. So it was it was D League. So okay. I signed, I signed with a team in Greece. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, they had loaned. I signed with Panathinaikos. They had loaned me to Pauk because mm. oh, okay, to who? Pauk, P A O K. Okay, I remember, I remember Pauk. Pauk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thessaloniki. So. Yeah. Contract was with Pelotonecos. They were supposed to pay me um, 170000 17000 a month. Mm. I was there four months and get $1. Damn. I ain't get $1. Wow. With the work, two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. I'm coming straight from college. All right. I had worked, but that work was a whole different work. Uh, so I end up having to leave Greece in the middle of the night because I was so famous in Greece. If I would have went to the airport, they would have yeah. avoided, you know what I'm saying? They would have been oh, no. Yeah, yeah, no. Can't, can't fly out of here? Yeah. They would have been like, yo, you right. can't go. You can't fly out of here. So, How was you surviving straight out of college for four months in Greece? <laughs> Roll over. It was rolling over. Uh-huh. It was still rolling over. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was at his end. You know what right. I mean? It was coming at his end. And and that's why I really had to cut the cord because I'm like, damn. And then I had four people. I took four people over there when I first went overseas. Mm-hmm. Four people from the D. Yeah. And they ain't getting out one check. The whole they time you was over there. one check. So that was rolling. Niggas don't understand. Like hold on. That's, that's no, crazy. hold on, man. No, niggas don't understand how much of a – Take four people over, over the world Round with trip, you, bro. On Your me. first year? Oh, well, yeah. The first day. Man, that's crazy. We, we all came together. Got you. One no sin, for We all came together. Damn. But that's Damn. how it kind of like was for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Any opportunities that I got, come on. You know what I mean? Spreading with yeah. the West. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I meet Jay-Z. I meet Beyonce. Somebody got to see this one. Come on, you right. come to see yeah, this. Somebody yeah. rolling. Yeah. Somebody rolling. Somebody got to attest to this. And we never bragged. It mm-hmm. was just, you just got to see this for you. You yep. know what I mean? So That was yeah. possible. I brought the closest people with me at that time. Come on, we going overseas. Was, was Cortez with you? You know he was with me. 
Tell, hey, tell Cortez to ease up off me, man. He know that was a mistake. Yeah, man. He, 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 he. <laughs> oh, we gonna talk about that. We all yeah, get into that. We all that. We for so all that. <laughs> yeah, Cork was with me, you know, but that propelled me. So after I left, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, cause they wrote something bad. Deshaun Sims bills on the team in the middle of the night. Mm. Um, he's all paid in full. We don't know what he's talking about. Gotcha. Um, so, so Euro my, basket. Yep, yeah, Euro basket. So you ain't never seen a dime of that to this day. Why did you leave? We're suspending. They, they're suspending you from getting the country, and they're not um, going to release you. You know how them Asians be. Yeah. And it's a Greek Asian. He's telling me why did I leave, and he know that he ain't getting no money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he always gonna take the side of the team. He always take the side of the team. Gotcha. You talking okay. about four months? So I left middle of the night. End up signing in the G League. Mm. First five games, I had 35. I ended up winning rookie of the year in the D League. You know what I mean? Man. Just off all um, animosity, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn. Yeah. I did you join be- later in the year or did you join right on time? I done? joined right on time. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, joined, right. I came here right on time. And I ain't do none of that training camp or nothing. I just acqu- was acquired. Yeah. And I ain't know what y'all plays was. I ain't know nothing. I just knew that I was him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that just gave me opportunities. After that, I was going to play in summer league. A team for Korea said no. Gave me a blank contract and was mm-hmm. like, took me up to a room in Vegas and was like, "What you want?" I still didn't know it was real. You it's know, a crazy man. question yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And the team was Hyundai Kia, like. Kids that people driving around there. Yeah. I was living out on Kia headquarters. I played in South Korea for two years. And and them I boys was just coming out back then too. Like I felt like what them kids, wasn't yep. they kind of new? And then, but then yeah. they still, um, it was Hyundai. So yeah, okay. Hyundai owns Kia. So mm-hmm. Hyundai was still there. We living on the um, the campus of Hyundai. Mm-hmm. State of the art, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Damn. You know, it, it was. So that blank check kind of probably. My boy didn't stop shit. Yeah, it kind of stopped the NBA. I ain't gonna say the NBA dream. Oh, that stopped the NBA. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what it sounded like. That but I wanted the NBA because okay, you know, they were doing some things in Korea, man. Every one we we played um, seven rounds of nine games, mm-hmm. right? So, seven rounds. Okay. Um, what's that? Sixty three. Yeah. Sixty three games. So you had to go fifty um, over five hundred. So every one game you got a thousand dollars. Every one oh. game you got a thousand dollars. If you go a bonus, no, 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 yeah. bonus. If you if you if you went go five hundred, you get a ten thousand dollars plus every game you won. So Sheesh. the season started. I started getting the season started in November. They wanted me in August, so I had already made about one forty before we even played a game. You know what I mean? First time mm-hmm. making money. <laughs> I'm on the shitter like I want to go home, man. I got to go spend this money, man. right? <laughs> <laughs> I got. He said, "I'm on the shitter. I got." <laughs> I'm counting it all, honey, because they gave the bonus right after the nine games, yeah. and they give it to you how you want America cash. Yeah. So my shit just piled up. I'm just like, I'm ready. We ain't talking about the wire. Yeah, yeah. we right. talking about the cash that I just got. It's extras. Yeah. yeah, I'm ready to go to the crib. You want to? <laughs> Every time you use the bathroom, what? every time. <laughs> and then they had, see, Damn. I'm the import. They had MVP of the game. Every MVP, you got 900. Damn. Guess how many times I'm the MVP? I'm I'll the only you, import. Every you, game. <laughs> and then they had MIP, like a, a assistant VIP. He got 700. Damn. He just giving his money Damn. away. For real. Oh. What was the competition like over there? So... But this was the gift of the curse. I played with a Korean that was 7'3". Mm. So every American they brung over here was t- for somebody to stop the beast. Yeah. Mm. When he went down, I had to deal with all the, you know, all, all, the, all, the, others, all, yeah. all the imports and all that, all the yeah. big fellas. Be just telling what? them niggas like, bro, don't post up, bro. You know they, you know I'm gonna get a foul, bro. They take two mm. dribbles, Joe, and they hanging off the rim like. The fucking monsters, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know none of these players. None of their names. They all from Florida. Damn. Like, they all from South Florida. Me. They all from Florida. 
Athletic is yeah. mean they getting a million. Look, they they already been over in Korea. They getting yeah. a million already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They already know the game. Yeah. And they just like they worked in the summer just to be built for like I'm gonna be unstoppable. And that was my demise, man. I couldn't do shit with none of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do shit with none. They was just monsters, like just post drop step. Drop step. Boom. Drop you step. Felt the elbow down. on the way. By the elbow. <laughs> I used to be talking to them niggas so they post up, bro, don't post up. Come on. What you doing? What you doing? Face what up, you doing? Face up. Face, Face up with your game back up. <laughs> Face but up. Then, when I played yeah. with my big fella, all the Korean foes gotta guard me. Mm. That's why I was there. Got you. But he take it. Every time he think he hurt, I'm like, come on, get up, man. You know what they going to do. So get up. Get up, Craig. <laughs> yeah, right. Get up, Craig. He played two games in a row. Then he like, ah, he come up limping. I'm like, no. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Dude, you got to see that overseas money and kind of like. Then I played in Lebanon. Mm. And I that was Lebanon beautiful. for like 300. When I was in Israel, man, they. They gave me one of them whole ass apartments, man. It was lizards all in my apartment and bats and shit. Some little geckos. Yeah, <laughs> but so I, I call them. I'm like, yo, like, man, it's lizards and bats in my apartment, bro. The motherfucker come with, like, the, the manager of the team, he come over there, motherfucker. He catching all the shit with his hand. Oh. <laughs> acting like acting like I'm like, shit, a, right. like, like I'm a sissy boy or some shit, man. Like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, I'm not. I'm not catching nigga no bats. Over here catching you know what I'm saying? I'm not for the me, city, bro. I ain't, yeah, I ain't never caught no bats. I never seen no fucking I ain't lizards. See the lizard ever? Hey, that nigga no, looking man. at you like you, you too you too good to catch a bat, nigga. <laughs> right. <laughs> in front of in front of my in front of my girl and my you know what I'm saying my kid. I'm like, bro, I ain't doing that, <laughs> nigga. Catch like, whatever. Bats. I don't feel Some the way. of them conditions yeah. be wicked as hell over there, but you know. You, it's a slave mentality shit. You want this money, you gonna get through it. Right, you gotta I mean, do what you gotta do. The biggest takeaway from your whole journey overseas, like, like, did you get like an epiphany type shit while you over there? Like, man, what am I, you know what I'm saying? At what point was it like, you know, like this is my journey that I'm on, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna I, focus on the game. I be, it became, I became like a local, man. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. I was just going back home. Okay. It's, I got, I got trapped in just this is my life, you know. And they love you over. You got love, I'm sure. Yeah, but you know, I'm still East Side, so it was like that wasn't nothing that I was never looking for. It was mm. just like I did my job, stayed in my shell, you know. I ain't seen guys over there just live that life all the way. Mm. I, I never could just every time I tried to dip a dab over there and you know, it'd probably be better to live over there than live over here. But you know, I just was so. Uh, you didn't alone. enjoy seeing like the, the the sightseeing and the monuments and no, none of that. I, I, like I know no. me, like I was totally against like going overseas. But then when I finally got over there, and I'm like living in different places, seeing different fashions. I used to you tell people that stuff wasn't over there. It was closed when they come visit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Clothes ain't nothing over there. Ain't nothing over there. Clothes. clothes. Yeah. <laughs> you crazy? It's clothes. They do a renovation. No, no. I feel that though. Like I mean, so at what point did you come back to the city full time? <laughs> right, you said what? I'm I sorry. said at what point did you come back to the city full time and you was back? Um, 2021. Okay. We okay. was just like they they were playing crazy with the money the last year and. I really just be, was becoming Italian. Like, I was in Italy for the last seven years of my right. career. Was mm-hmm. you there during COVID or you came back I was there COVID? during COVID. Damn, okay. You was going to jail if you went outside. During COVID, like. Right, I remember that there. Italy was going crazy. That year I was going to retire, but they called back another year. Like, so, I got to rewind this back a little bit. So if somebody came to visit for seven days, <laughs> how? <laughs> Was was the stores closed for seven days? <laughs> you a basketball manager for seven days. <laughs> <laughs> you a basketball manager, straight up. Hey, look, yo, get on the program, man. How you trying to start a program? You in a whole other country, man. I'm over here working. Right. Ain't no time to play. So that I mean, so that's a little change. Well, we got what two if, practices. You want me to it, go walk the Coliseum, the Rocky Grant? <laughs> what if it was a female though? It was a female. Different rules, bro. 
No. Shit still closed? Program. Practice still started at nine, brother. <laughs> it didn't even it didn't even matter, man. I still got the Damn. same schedule, bro. I can't had it ain't you can't have no all nighter. I I just seen guys do it. I was never that type. Got you. I can't party, have booze, do that, and then do something in the morning. Mm-hmm. I gotta have a day off. You mean like That's I right just right. can't do it. That's always been my mindset. So I you never plan your it. you plan your party in accordingly and all that. Yeah, man. I'm a ro- I, I became robotic over there. I understand? Real robotic. Is that good though? That I mean that was good for the. It's good to be over there, but when you come back here. And you dealing with real people and yeah. people that's on the go. That's and, what I want to know. Your transition back to the D, like, like, was it different? Was the East Side still the same for no, you? No, like, it was hard. It was okay. hard because I'm moving. So. You know, over there, you just come out. You can come out with your Crocs, no socks. Got you. Um, you know, you come out. You could do whatever. And so just, you got to get back to Detroit way of shit. Yep, you can walk dark. Um, you ain't worried about <laughs> nothing on the phone. Ain't nobody yeah, gonna hit good. you. You better stop for a pedestrian. Uh. Um, the dogs won't bite you through there. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> The dogs got a different demeanor. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> no, facts. The dog is nice as what you said? What? They mind their business. They ain't sniffing. They ain't barking. You see a stray dog, you ain't tripping. You see a stray dog, Over you here, you yeah. running. You over here, you got to be cautious. Like, <laughs> everything over there is different. Hey, dog, the croc no socks is hilarious, bro, because I, I, I lived in Phoenix for like three years, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it was a difference going and coming back. So you gone <sighs> 15 plus years, you come back like... I'm gonna get back on my pivot. Oh, you know socks what I'm wasn't even real no more. Socks. <laughs> only time I put on socks, socks was, they so wasn't real. <laughs> only time I put on socks is when I'm about to put on a basketball shoe. Straight I'm up. <laughs> Straight Other up. than that, I don't care how dry my heel is, <laughs> and they don't care either. Right, they, right. It's just like it's just what we do. Like, yeah. so you was a, you was straight up. Of the culture overseas, they had to come back and, and get don't adjusted. Care, they don't judge you. Like, yeah. it's Living, a no bro. judgment zone. You can't first that back. Nah, nah, man, you can't be laughing this whole shit, though. <laughs> it's the realest shit, though. And he's saying it's so no far, judgment. bro. The no, the no judgment zone. Straight up. Yeah. You can come. Hey, no. Over here, you got you to gotta put that shit right, on just to go to the liquor store a right pocket for the mil- A pocket for the money with your heels out, huh? With your he- out, ashy man. heel cracking. Yeah. I like those crocs. Care. That's all they with say. With the croc hanging, out, hanging off the croc. <laughs> <laughs> and then guess what? You shower in the crocs. They wet. You put them back on <laughs> with no socks. And you go about your way. They keep it moving. You can't do that in they the keep D. It you can't do that in <laughs> the D. No. You Why you can't do that in the D? Come on, man. <laughs> Why you got on crocs anyway? <laughs> Straight up. That's the first thing they I throw my son crocs to go to the liquor store. I'm like, I feel crazy right now. <laughs> I feel crazy. <laughs> Why so, you got no crocs? Why you got no crocs anyway? What? Hey, All man. those things overseas I came here just trying to do, and it, it, it just man. don't go. Like, even now, like, I can practice. Over there, I was practicing. Snap. Mm. Wake up. Eat. Practice. Eat. Shower. Sleep. I don't know if it's 6, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. Now, work, <laughs> work, practice, coach. If it's six or seven o'clock, that's that just give me room to go to sleep. I just feel like I got more hours to you know get. Mm-hmm. I get ten, twelve hours mm-hmm. on a regular day of sleep. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, just because. <laughs> shit, I'm trying to get to the next day. That's what mm-hmm. my mindset overseas. Mm-hmm. Practice finish. Soon as that second practice finish, my day is over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going straight to sleep because I got to get to the next one. And that ain't no, like, so jail you mentality. Living, you weren't going to the clubs or the bars or nothing overseas? If I do, I if I did that, I did that one time. And I only got to yeah. do it one time. Yeah. Like, well, God, God was with me through all of that. Mm. But how many years you played overseas? Twelve. That's crazy, man. I mean, from to transition from what you was on to, you know what I'm saying? But then I was on, cause, but then again, I was on grease. I was on fried food. I was on, I wasn't on white chicks, and I wasn't on pasta. You feel me? So I wasn't going to turn into that over there. Straight you know up. what I mean? You you know? Straight up. Wait, wait. 
He wasn't like soul food. No, he wasn't on white chicks and pasta. My man was. He was on that soul food. That's the whole thing. Trying to let you know. <laughs> no, no, no. That's just like it's a difference, bland and you know flavor. You mean mm-hmm. like if it, I wasn't just go, eating it just because it was food. You know, gotcha. I, and that's why I learned how to cook. Cause I want to talk about that because. That's the story. Do you got some ownership with, with uh, I think Lily Mays? Yep. Right. So, yeah, hey, you hey, got to tap in right, on, right. On, on, on the business and the ownership, and not right. what title this pod, podcast: White Chicks and Pasta. Man. <laughs> For real, <laughs> For real. Bro. No white chicks, no pasta. Man. White we chicks, and yeah, we ain't on that. We ain't on that. Shit. No, no, no. But it, it it just was the thing where I I, I never got into none of that over there. I mm. mean, I, I would do it just to do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it was you know. And then in Lebanon, it was like Damn. they they pulling up when you go out. It's a Ferrari. It's like fifteen Ferraris, okay. Bentleys, everything. Nothing you gonna do gonna put a dent in this club. So you might as well just stay home. Right. Like, you there for Damn. nothing for real. Yeah, for decoration, man. Yeah, you there for the decoration. Don't say gotcha. that to don't say that to Barry Bonds over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was probably working. He was working. <laughs> over there putting in work. You gotta right. cut that off, bro. Right, we got chilling, man. We just, yeah, 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 you had a good career, man. <laughs> had a good time over in Lebanon. <laughs> so let's talk about coming back, you know what I'm saying? Before we transition to the, you know, to the boys that won and all that. And mm-hmm. you know, um, I wanna talk about the business, you know what I'm saying? Like Lily Mays yeah. over there in Southfield off Northwestern. You know I'm in all the restaurants, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Tell me about that and like how that came about and how it's been going for you. So basically it was um, me cooking, you know, my passion for cooking all the way in college, you know what I mean? So the guys that's involved with Lily Mays always knew my wrist, you know what I mean? Knew what I could <laughs> do as far as cooking. So Yeah, that's crazy. It, I, I it, it was like the same with basketball, you know. Just it just worked, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, so being over there, you know, the only thing I found comfort in was food, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they had nothing American over there, and they yeah. despise like any American products, they ban mm-hmm. them all, you know. Mm-hmm. So I end up finding out that Army bases got this place like a Walmart on there, yeah. commissary, yeah. You know what I mean. So I don't care if it was four hours away, six hours away, seven hours away. No what country I was in, once a month, I was going to the commissary. Okay. And I'm getting every piece of home. I'm staying there two or three hours, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just, I go, it'd take me 40 minutes to go at one hour, you know what I mean? Just because that shit was that delicate over there, having yeah. a piece of home. And that's what mm-hmm. I found comfort in, food. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Of course, I'm over there mastering my skills, right. working on temperature, working on. Uh, so you a real chef? You, yeah, I was working you, okay. on all that. While you know what I mean, kind of the school part of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I always had the talent for cooking. You know what I mean? So you was nerding out on this shit over there. It's just only you. You just like fuck it. I'm about to. It do was it. only me. I was nerding out on there. I was gotcha. making everything. I was <laughs> baking. I was. You know what I mean? Souffling. I was doing everything. Yeah. Roasting. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. No, pity, Straight man. up. No, PD, like that. No, PD can really cook, man. Like, and what and what's crazy is we had an event, the Big Three event here, and <laughs> oh man, and, and, and PD was the the cook, man, and <laughs> people were going crazy. Like this food is no, crazy. Food was you know what I'm saying? That food was nuts. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. But PD didn't want to be in that kitchen, man. <laughs> 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 he, he, got paid, he, got paid, he got paid. He got paid good money, bro. He was looking at it like y'all can't believe y'all gonna have me in here, man. You know, that's the thing, man. It's like it's just like a a talent, but I don't want to put it on. I just want to do it for recreation. Now, now. I feel that. Yeah. I feel. I cut hair, bro, but I hate fucking cutting hair. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to cut. I just cut my boys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. Like you know, my kids. Mm-hmm. I ain't cutting nobody, but it's yeah. like I stay crispy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's like, I feel that shit, though. And we're cooking. I ain't cooking, but I love the shit. That's wild. That's what's up. Pity funny as that. He was like, I can't believe y'all got me in here with all that out there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you just looking at me <laughs> like, damn, man. Back and shit, man. <laughs> what you want me to do? I got food and shit on me, man. <laughs> no, it went down, man. But shout out to um, JC, man. Mm-hmm. Cutting the check, man. And he kept his word because, you know, he, he know me from cooking – our Boston days, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we we were doing that up there and and when he opened this spot, you know, 
I remember when he got this spot, you know what I'm saying? And it took a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just holding it down, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The vultures yeah. coming. Yeah. I know they want to buy it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's one of the best yeah. spots right. in the city, you know what I mean? It's more than a speakeasy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a vibe, you know? So, like, I always had, like, a, a, a special connection for people who bled, like, the city of Detroit. Mm-hmm. And, and Jordan, you too, Joe, mm-hmm. was always a guy who – Detroit player, you know what I mean? When you think mm-hmm. about Detroit players, look at this place, you know what I mean? Yeah. Held it down. Didn't sell, you know what I mean? Look at this motherfucker now, man. Man, it took a lot of, it took a I lot know, of work, man. man. It took a lot of work. I know, man. I always wanted to ask him, you know what I mean? Ask you too, like, through all this, you know what I mean? The ups and downs, like, how was it possible to still keep it going and, you know what I mean, keep it to where you got to this point right well, it's now? Kind, Not it's give kind, up. You know, it's kind of like your journey as far as, like, uh, you know, uh, after basketball, you you know, you, you cooking, you you know what I'm saying? You're doing a bunch of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Things you like to do. And while we was growing up, my mom, my mom always worked for the city of Detroit, you know what I'm saying? And she shout used to, to CEO. Yeah, shout out to CEO. She used to, she just knew the landscape of Detroit. She mm. never got that shot to really do big things like this, but she knew about it. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And she used right. to come home and share stuff uh, with us. You know what Dang I'm saying? That type shit like Duke. Right. Yeah, so, okay. you know, due to like, you know, uh, just, you know, how life goes. Life don't go like you plan it all the mm-hmm. time. And uh, as far as like with basketball, you know, not getting the same opportunities you used to get and things mm-hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? We was putting our foot in everything that we could you know what i'm saying and this building you know came av- available and we bought it and uh you know we didn't know what we wanted to do with it you know what i'm saying we just knew that we wanted some property downtown on the Our river location, you know what right. i'm saying so you know just like you would experience and blood of traveling all over the world mm-hmm. and visiting different places and you know, having coffee at in, in different countries and things like that. Yeah. That's what we wanted to bring home, and it kind of just happened. I can't say we planned it from day one buying it, but through experiences and through living in Detroit and uh, figuring out what we wanted to do, you know, having some success and having failures, you yep. know what I'm saying? And we just stuck with it, and now we're here, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it mm-hmm. – you know, it's just about keep going. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You don't know where it leads you. You know what I'm saying? Just like, is, yeah, like just like we all are. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right up. Yeah. That's a story with everything for real. You just yeah. kind of so. get on that journey and it might take you here. It yeah. might take you there. You don't know what it is. Yeah. So that's real. So you back. You a businessman. You know what I'm saying? You coaching. I'm. You know what I'm saying? You, you yeah. taking over the youth at, at Persian. So that's all commendable, man. So, like, we big that shit up around yeah. here, bro. So. I'm happy you back around the way. I want to get some like, I mean, e- I mean, even funneling all our kids that we mess with mm-hmm. through through PD, like mm-hmm. seem like you got to talk to everybody. It's like why not? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think it make Alphazon stronger. It make Detroit basketball stronger. And um, the game is beautiful right now. I mean, I've seen some people saying the game that took a little cutback since yeah. certain people left, and you know it is what it is with that. Mm-hmm. But we got to give it up for the state champs and all that. You know what I'm saying? For, mm-hmm. you know, all ABC, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Trey no, and so. Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to give it for Warren Lincoln. And now it's mm-hmm. Brandywine, state champs for uh, this season, man. Let's clap yeah, it up. Yeah, no, for sure, sure, man. So, all right. We've we been covering Trey, like, nonstop mm-hmm. since freshman year, for real. And um, we kind of got to see how they lost last year and see the comeback. Mm-hmm. We weren't surprised on that pick. We all picked that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Y'all got any comments on their championship run? Let me pose a question to Petey. Yeah, go hi, because I, I know how y'all feel. How you feel about Trey? You know what I'm saying? And, and what he's done thus far in his career? Man, I think he's, you know, each year he got better. And yeah. one thing, you know, I, I learned or heard from him talking and just from watching him, he working on his game. And mm-hmm. I'm a fan of kids working on their game. And I just know. Yeah. You really care about the game, and you put that work in, and I mean, you dedicated to it. You know, you gonna you gonna reap the rewards, and you know, ain't no secret. I think he's the best player in the state, and 
He only getting better. And right. Mm -hmm. Him coming back. I mean, with some of those players that he got, man. Coming back. He said that. That's on wax. That's, I, yeah. I, I heard him say it on he wax. He coming so, back yeah. already, huh? Yeah, for a talent, he like me, a bucket getter. What's some of the things that, like, let's say y'all, you know, y'all trying, y'all got 15, 20 minutes. What you going to tell them on that court? What you going to show them? Like, what's some things you would, like, you know, kind of build with them on? Oh, we're going to get to his spots. Uh, he going to show me his favorite spots, mm -hmm. which I probably already know. You know, yeah. he like to get to that midi. Elbow, you know I mean? both elbows. So if we figuring yeah. out whatever ways to get to that midi, because that's the shot that you're going to be able to get the most. And... Mm -hmm. That's just how going to make or break Mo him the most. most you know comfortable. What I mean? So mm -hmm. we'll be getting to that midi in, in a thousand different ways. Got you. So just yeah. any way to get to that midi because that's going to go to. Counters, mm -hmm. you know what I yeah. mean? The setup, everything about that, you know what I mean? I'm about development. So I look at this game and look at a player that's, I mean, past his tenure or NBA guy that's similar to him and mm -hmm. dissect him and try to have a little bit of him in this game too. Got you. Straight up. I love that. No, so what about y'all boys? Like, y'all surprised? Like, North Farmington, they fought hard. They had a great season. Uh, a couple players there had great careers and going on to play, do big things, D1. Um, what do y'all want to say about North Farmington and, and, and their run? Uh, I thought they had, I mean, they had a great one-two punch. Well, actually, I think it was like a three-man wrecking crew with Dylan Probably. Smith, uh, Landon Williams, and Tyler Spratt. Um, in the championship game, uh, it seemed like Savory, man, kind of. He gave he gave uh, Dylan some problems on the block, I should say. But uh, Landon, man, um, him and Spratt, they they went out gunning. Uh, I think they gained a lot of respect yeah. for what they already had from you know their peers and the people that watched the game. But I was a, uh, you know, St. Mary's just man, this is a different, it's a different, different level of right play, now, man. man. Different beast, man. Yeah. Trey went out. On top, 33, 32, and 11, or 32 and 10, something like that, man. That's like crazy stat line. Uh, no, nah, yeah, that was, that was insane, man. And then the good. supporting characters, we got to give it up for Smythe, like you said, Savory. Smythe, mm -hmm. Sherrod, Sherrod, Come on, man. man. I, I think, like his game a lot. I think, you know, uh, they did a, a, a good job of – I think the coach did a good job of preparing them for that run. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they were well prepared. Uh, I don't know. If, I think we talked about it on last episode, but how uh, ready for the moment Tyler Spratz was yeah. and Landon Straight up, in man. key moments. Uh, I'm often hard on them about their playing style. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just into kids' development and seeing them being, being able to try, try stuff out on this high school level. Because mm -hmm. if you don't try it out on this level – it's very Damn, unlikely. So to, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Right. But I think the coach did a good job of preparing them to play their games in these key moments in this state run. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, so I think they did a good job. They just ran into them big boys. Yeah, yeah, straight straight up. Up. Oh, yeah. And um, Spratt's going on to Cleveland State, so we got to big that up. And um, yeah. Niagara is where Atlanta's going. Yeah. Um, all right, so the game, I guess the round before that, Mm -hmm. To get into Huron and um, Macari Moore, I know we were kind of anticipating that game. Yeah, but St. Mary's kind of they just put the stomp down, man, and just mm -hmm. kind of did what they did. Um, and I know you was kind of talking about different things. I guess Farmers could have did in their approach. Yeah, with Landon, if you want to touch on that right quick before we get into Macari, and then I guess that one three one early on. Yeah, like, no, nah, I was just saying. Uh, you know, we always talk about, like, North Farmington and their system or whatnot, and kind of, like, no one has defined roles as, like, who's the go-to guy. Right. And I think in that situation, like, the way you've seen Landon kind of getting loose in the second half, that's what you wanted to see a little bit more of. And, you know, it seemed like down the stretch it was other guys that were, um, you know, getting certain opportunities, which you're not mad at. You kind of – when you're in the flow of coming back, you know, you got – Random guys yeah. doing random things and whatnot. Right. But I just wanted to see Landon with the ball in his hand a little bit more and uh, to see him create for his team and be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. I mean, he he did good, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But uh, Just little things we see. Because I'd be asking, like, what could they have did, if anything? You know yeah. what I'm saying? He was nah, like, yeah. I know for me it was just like we talking about the half court sets and just like yeah. getting into the pick and roll, going to a strong hand or whatnot. Okay. Put a little bit more pressure on Savory where he wasn't able to – play between the ball handler and Dylan as much when they was playing the pick and roll. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, okay. So, um, but you know, Little it's tough, like man. That. Yeah, yeah it's tough. You can't. And even if he did that, who knows what would have happened? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about McCarty Moore for a second. He committed to um, Iowa State Cyclones. Yeah, Iowa State. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and had a great junior season. Junior campaign was good. Um, rose through the ranks a little bit. I feel like and. But still came up short. So what do you say to a player like that that loses in that situation? Because it's not like you got to keep your head down all summer. Mm -hmm. but he going into his senior year now. Yeah, right? Right. Into his senior year. So. Committed. So he kind of like playing free, I would think. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that do. but His work so, ethic, man. though, is crazy. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so he going to get even better than he was this year just based on me seeing him work. You know, I we like the college choice, too. Yeah, me too. The history of it. I don't know the coach there right now, but – the history of the Cyclones, they let their guards play. Especially their point guards. Right. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. their right. point guards. They're going to be able to cook a little bit. Iowa State? Yeah, Iowa yeah. State. Yeah. Yeah. They go to the league, too. Mm -hmm. They go to the league, too. Yeah. So, yeah. so, let's talk about Warren Lincoln. Um, <laughs> I feel like Warren Lincoln had a great game. I like I like Marcus Blackwell. And I, and I, I had – I knew he was cold, you know what I'm saying? But I know yeah. he was injured a little bit. And then, you mm -hmm. know, bro, I'm watching – Bro, with the finish, is like, oh, he crazy. Yeah. But it's a certain calm and peace that Marcus play with. And I'm like, he he seemed mature to me. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So let's talk about they run. And, um, you know, matter of fact, Petey, tell me how you feel about that squad and, you know, what you think about them winning that, that chip. So, yeah, so two of those coaches, um, one of them was a good friend, and one of them actually coached me in high school, the head right. coach, Waddell. Mm -hmm. And I've been, you know, knowing Kamari Burton since he's been a baby and, I've been seeing the Blackwells. They've been training forever. So mm -hmm. I took a liking to, of course, Waddell and my boy over there. So that was my favorite team. Yeah. More so because of Marcus, that 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 killer calm, man. Yeah, yeah. Remind me like a Deion Harris, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Never really too up or too down, you know what I'm saying? I Basically think he hit that shot in the state. Mm -hmm. See how deep that three yeah. he hit what? And he didn't even have a facial expression. Mm -hmm. All this. Yeah. Yeah. All For real. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He didn't like, care. Mm -hmm. Even right. after they won the states, the mm -hmm. um, press conference. Too chill. Mm -hmm. yeah. Too chill. Yeah. Like, but that's how he always is, you know what I mean? I've yeah. seen him a million times. He know what I do. Know what, I give him a high five. It's like he don't care who's in the room. He don't care, man. He just – Love the hoop. Yeah. So, I mean, that team, um, shout out to Y, you know what I mean? Six years, getting a state mm. title, and you mean, first Say what they going to say now. What they going to say now. What they going to say now. I know kind of that pedigree, that foundation, you know what I mean, that old school type of way of getting mm -hmm. guys to buy in mm -hmm. to a system. So, shout out to Warren Lincoln. All day. Yeah, shout out to Warren Lincoln, man. Well, what's up? I feel like hey, I feel like clear that up, Joe. Clear that up for, for I, Cortez. I man. feel like somebody in here. Hey, <laughs> hey, on the I feel real. Like somebody bro. picked against them. You know? Hey, I can't on the who. real. And I don't like going back on my word. You playing both sides? No, I ain't playing. I know you ain't playing, playing both sides. Both sides. Oh, y'all knew, oh, hey, yeah. knew that that last episode was long, man. What? Hey, yo, that episode was. Long. Oh, okay, guy. Right. Yeah, God, the, the long, it was long, yeah. man. I was, and I forgot who I was picking against, man. I just. We're trying to close the shit up, and it, nah. it happened. It happened to be the guys, man. <laughs> hey, Tess, my bad, man. You're playing both sides, dog. Tess, you playing both sides, both sides right now, man. We don't nah, like man, nah, man. The youngest don't like that. My guy, shout out, though. <laughs> shout out, shout out. <laughs> All right, okay, but no, I know um, my man uh, Owinga is going to Toledo. Yeah. Um. So he had a good career. Um. But tell me about his game. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know you you like his game a lot, so. Yeah, no, I I like uh the style of play, man. Uh, great, great rim defender. Uh good touch around the basket as well. Um going on with our guys in Toledo, you know what yeah, I'm saying? He going to Toledo, link up with Sonny Wilson. Um those guys won the Mac championship. They lost in the first round of the Mac champ uh Mac tournament, but yeah. still had a great season. And I'm just looking forward to seeing him there, man. Uh, the, his team, the, man, the latest team, had a great run. Uh, just ran into Warren Lincoln. But he played well in the state championship game. And uh, just looking forward to seeing him on the next level. All right. Well, we're going to uh, wrap it up. But before we do, we got to talk about Niles Brandywine, Vince. Come on, now. I had to do some research yeah. to see where they was at. They over there right here, cuz, right by Indiana, man. All they, black kids, man. I was wrong, <laughs> man. Where they get them from? Like, Oh, I know. Hey, when I was watching, I was watching the play. I'm like, where are these brothers from? Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> That's the first thought. thing. That's crazy. Fort Wayne, probably. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. right there. 
Or where ain't them up? So it's like, I know they down there, you know what I'm saying? So uh, they took out our guys, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh boy, the lady from East Cleveland. Oh. <laughs> East 1990. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, uh, Quan and them. I'm like, I might, I had a little blank, but they yeah. took out Quan and the boys and um, at Old Red. I feel like they had a great season, hit the game, you know what I'm saying? A little buzzer beater and all that, but yeah. came up short to uh, my man, I think his name, Jeremiah. So I don't want to get his name wrong, but. He was playing smooth oh, out yeah, there. Oh, yeah, that guard. He was yeah. playing. He Number three, right? Brother. Yeah. He got a twin brother on the team. Mm -hmm. He's straight as hell, bro. Yeah, yeah. His game was, was, was looking official. Yeah, so. I, I don't great. know where they're going, but you, I just wanted to show love. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Could not oh, miss Big shout out to Brandywine, man. Yeah. Brandywine. We got to slide to Brandywine one time for the one time. So, um, fellas, man, we done covered a lot, dog. I feel like we, you know, I know things I ain't know about my dog over here, Petey, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a pleasure to meet you, bro. And, uh, Appreciate it. I feel like you got episode, a lot to, man. yeah, man, you got a lot to yeah. offer these youngins, bro, yeah. straight up, because they gonna listen to you for they listen to like some coach out you. there. Yeah, for, oh me for sure. They <laughs> I'm, just to me. No, for sure. I'm just joking. I'm right. telling nigga, what you listen to me for? <laughs> I mean, I got jokes, you know what I'm saying. I'm a comedian. You want to do that, but you want to hoop? Listen to the hoopers, bro. So that's what I like to do is like direct people to mm. the people they gotta talk to, bro. So. Dude. Respect over here, bro. And you know, yeah. you got some knowledge too, though. Some I mean, come on, man. But we keep down, you know, okay. my business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We got to yeah. up the youth, man. So, any yeah. final words, fellas? Anything y'all got to say? No, nah, man. Appreciate you coming, yeah. man. Yeah. Great oh, episode, yeah, man. I think the kids gonna learn a lot. They gonna you talk their language, so Straight that's up. even more. And once Bless you pull up for an interview, bro, you officially part of the cast. Yeah, sure. You come talk hoops whenever. Sure. And we appreciate you for sliding through, man. Nah, most definitely appreciate you pulling up, man, and, and yeah. you know, sharing the stories, man, talking about the journey. Great, yeah, because I feel great, like it's a couple, great. man, a couple more stories we, that, we, that we ain't get, you know what I'm saying? Nah, we got some it's great ones, You can always bring them on again, Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying, for sure. So, yeah, yeah we got to bring shout, back I want to shout my, um, two of my twins out, two of my players at Persia, man. These guys, be on the lookout for them. It's enough for a Persian to win a city championship. Hicks. Oh man, oh, the they, they nice, yeah. man. Okay, they nice, man. What grade they, then? They they gonna be seniors, man. Right. Um, Terrence and Tayshawn Hicks. I think somebody told me about them. They dual threats, man, and the they twins. they, they go crazy. hard. Got some nice size, man. They and, and then that's the thing, man. Bringing awareness to these schools because when I was here, no matter who was um, on the roster, you had these college coaches in the building. Yeah, you know? and I know at the end of the day. College, these colleges are still open. They still yeah. got the budget for recruiting. These college coaches, assistant yeah. coaches, still out, out these schools lined still up. pulling up. Mm -hmm. Where they at, you know what I mean? So that's where I come in at, man, just trying to bring back. I remember when I was there, every college coach in the country was there, not just because I was there based on, you know what I mean, my coaches was doing the job, you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Mm -hmm. Them coaches felt comfortable coming in there. Right, right. Yeah. We got to make it where – they can come mm -hmm. back on the east side. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. And, and bring that PSL back. Yeah, where bring that PSL at. back. You know what I right. mean? And mm -hmm. shout out to anybody who trying to help the PSL. And we got to get these kids to coming back. You know, we running them out. Or if we're going to run them out, let's start develop help, help develop the ones that's there, man. We got to mm -hmm. put more resources in the city, man. It's it, it can change, man. Mm -hmm. So it takes a village, though. Indeed. Yeah, indeed. For sure. Straight up, because a village is what kind of got you to where you at, bro. I mean, so Based I know it works. It. I know yeah, that's the yeah. recipe. Man. Straight it's up. Just, people got to get off their ass and really mm -hmm. know we dealing with kids and shit. They need our help just like the ones before us help indeed. us. Right. Yeah. For right. sure. Facts. Straight up, man. Well, hey, first off, pull up to Lily Mays yep. in Southfield on Northwestern over there by that chicken shack. Mm -hmm. Pull up to the crib. We down here on Jefferson. Pull up to Faith and Focus and get some training. Dude, pull up to dude. one of these comedy shows. We doing stuff, man. We doing what we got to do. And uh, our main focus is the youth. So we out of here. After Zion. Let's get it. It's time to go. Peace. Let's get it. So you wonder where the crime? So you wonder where the crime? No blood, no fire. Hey, cut the baby in the fire. Hey, 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 blood is thicker than water. Well, I'm a splash brother, my jumper is agua. They pass me the rock at the end of the quarter. Cause I am a bucket, step back from the corner.